بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ویلکم اگین وی ور ٹاکنگ اباؤٹ دا کاربوہائیڈریٹ میٹابولزم ری ایکشنز اینڈ وی ہیو اسٹارٹڈ سم اف دا پارٹ اف دا کاربوہائیڈریٹ میٹابولزم اینڈ وی کور سم اف دی تھنگز اباؤٹ دا کاربوہائیڈریٹ میٹابولزم ان دا پریویس لیکچر دیز ار دا تھنگز وی ہیو کورڈ اسپیشلی دا گلوکوز ٹرانسپورٹر اینڈ Uh, a brief overview of uh, uh, energy liberation reactions glucose catabolism how that is converted into that uh, how the glucose that is converted into the energy we have seen the brief steps for that so uh, today uh, we will be starting with the actual glycolysis process uh, and this uh, actually we will be covering this part. of the glycolysis so uh, glycolysis that was uh, named uh, with the name of the scientist at then mayor of pathway and uh, basically you know that the glucose is a six carbon compound so the uh, glycolysis process that splits the six carbon uh, glucose into three carbon molecules and there will be two molecules that will be dual so there was uh, actually six carbon so when that is converted into two molecules each molecule will have the three carbon compounds of the pyruvic acid so overall uh, uh, that will consume two ATPs but also generate four ATPs and uh, all of that process is composed of 10 reactions this pathway that is composed of 10 reaction uh, and uh, the fate of the pyruvic acid that, that will depend upon the oxygen availability either it may undergo anaerobic condition uh, aerobic condition uh, you know that anaerobic condition that is uh, uh, when the oxygen is not available in Uh, required amount that will be the anaerobic condition under that condition uh, the end product will be the lactic acid and when this lactic acid is produced uh, that will move to the uh, liver cells hepatocytes that will convert it back to the pyruvic acid but if the cells have a plentiful oxygen supply so the product will be acetyl coa instead of the lactic acid so under the aerobic condition acetyl coa produce but under the anaerobic condition lactic acid is uh, produced so these are the different product under different conditions these are the product from the glycolysis process from the glucose So glucose can be converted into lactic acid under anaerobic condition or uh, this glucose that can be converted into, into acetyl coa under aerobic condition so uh, look at this one uh, uh, this is the brief overview we have uh, uh, seen in the previous lecture as well uh, so look at this uh, one uh, the glucose that is converted into pyruvic acid through 10 steps of the glycolysis atp and adh is generated this pyruvic acid uh, is turned into the acetyl coa again production of nadh is here it's a stored form of the energy then this acetyl coa goes into the krebs cycle and this krebs cycle consists of the eight steps Uh, that is producing ATPs, that is producing NADA, that is producing FADAH. So all of this FADAH, NADA, this NADH, NADA, this NADH, that goes to the electron transport chain. This is the electron transport chain in the mitochondria, thus generating the ATPs through oxidative phosphorylation process, oxidative phosphorylation uh, process. so that is the whole process from the glucose to uh, the electron transport chain that is providing the 
energy. So all of that is called is the cellular respiration process. Cellular respiration. It's a catabolic type of the uh, uh, process for giving the energy. So we will be starting with this part, glycolysis part. So there are 10 reactions of the glycolysis. You have to see the structures of all that. So glucose, uh, starting with the uh, glucose, you know that the glucose that have the structure that can be well described in the form of the pyranose. It's a six, six carbon structure. It's a six carbon structure. Carbon number one, carbon number two, carbon three, carbon four, carbon five, and carbon six is outside the ring. So th this is the structure for the glucose. It's, it's called as the pyranose structure, pyranose. So look at this one, this is the glucose molecule. So once the glucose is entered into the cell that is converted into glucose 6-phos, that is phosphorylated. So this glucose that is converted into the glucose 6-phosphate, where this phosphate will be adding, this will be adding at that point, replacing the hydroxyl group. So kinase is the enzyme that will be involved and where from where this phosphorus is coming this phosphorus is coming from ATP so look at this one this glucose is converting into the glucose 6-phosphate kinase enzyme is there and the phosphorus is added at that point this is the phosphorus all the molecule that glucose molecule that is the same how you will write H OH, H, OH, OH, a third carbon at the, this is the third carbon, the third carbon, the OH is at the top position, all other OH that will be at the lower position. This fifth number carbon is the CH. So this, all the molecule that will be the same, only the phosphorus that will be added at six number carbon by the kinase enzyme. So this glucose is converted into glucose 6-phosphate. You can see the name indicate the position of the phosphate. At the glucose molecule, it's 6 carbon. This is the 6 carbon. This is the 6 carbon. At 6 carbon, phosphate is attached. Here. So the isomerase enzyme that convert this glucose 6-phosphate into fructose 6 phosphate fructose is the keto sugar glucose is the aldo sugar it's aldo sugar it's a keto sugar that dominantly prevails exist in the form of the furano furan structure what is that furan structure furan is a five carbon five ring type of the structure this is the five ring type of the structure This is the furan structure. It's a five ring structure. This was the six ring structure that was called as pyranose. This is called as the furanose. In this, the first carbon is outside the ring. The second carbon is here. The third carbon is here. The fourth carbon is here. This is the fifth carbon and the sixth carbon is again out of the ring structure. So this is the furan. So fructose most 
oftenly that exist in the furanose form. This is the furanose form. You can see first carbon, second carbon is this one, third carbon, fourth carbon, fifth carbon, sixth carbon. So the third carbon OH is at the top, all other OH are at the bottom. So look at this one, this is an isomer. You know that isomer is the having the same molecular weight but different structure. So that this one and this one have the same molecular weight but have different structure. You can see this is a no structure, this is a pure no structure. So all the molecule is the same except this one this is at the number six right so as some reason enzyme is here working so the first step was glucose that was at once phosphorylated converting into glucose six phosphate this glucose six phosphate that is converting into fructose six phosphate and Phosphofructokinase, I have given the example well when we were discussing about the enzyme chapter. So, so phosphofructokinase that is working on the fructose 6-phosphate as the name indicates, fructokinase. Fructo means the substrate, kinase means transfer of phosphorus. As I told you, whenever you heard the word kinase that is an enzyme that is associated with the transfer of phosphorus. So look at this one, okay, how that is transferring the phosphorus. Look at this one, <coughs> that is that is already phosphorylated, but this point that is non-phosphorylated. And when we talked about the phosphofructokinase, we talked about the acceptor is the alcohol OH group so you can see the alcohol is uh, present here alcohol is present here so it means that will accept the phosphorus group here look at this one and from where this phosphorus is coming that is coming from ATPs so this phosphorus that is going at that point acceptor is the hydro alcohol group so this is the same structure all the structure will be the same only this at this point the phosphorus is added from the ATP so here we are coming glucose glucose 6 phosphate fructose 6 phosphate fructose 1 6 bis phosphate because there are two phosphate now one phosphate two phosphate so what this was the fructose so what will be the name fructose 1 6 bis phosphate why th this is 1 6 because phosphorus is attached at first carbon phosphorus is attached at six number carbon so fructose 1 and 6 this one 6 bis phosphate two phosphates are available bis phosphate so up till now, uh, fructose 1,6-bis phosphate that is uh, produced. So after that, at that point, the aldolase enzyme that will be acting here. What is the aldolase property of the aldolase? That is the lyases belong to the class of the lyases that break down without the water molecule. So this is a six car, you can see this is a six, one, two, three, four, five, six. It's a six carbon substance. So that will be converting into three carbon substances. Two, three carbon substances. Number one substance, number two substance. So two substances are produced here. Each have the three carbons. Each have the three carbon. You can see one, two, three. First compound. One, two, Three, three carbons. So, what are the these three carbons compound from this six carbon compound? First one is the dihydroxyacetone phosphate. 
that will be covering these three components. And this is the glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate. This will be this component. So that will be breaking into the half. This 3 that will be making the dihydroxy acetone phosphate and this 3 these three carbon one, two, and three. These three carbon that will be making the glyceraldehyde three. For you can see, HOH, CH, and this will be the last six here. This will be the last. So th this phosphorus is the first. You can see this phosphorus is the first. So the, this part will be the dihydroxyacetone phosphate, and this part will be the glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate and you can see here these are interconvertible it means there is the isomerase inside is working here and you know that what is the properties of the isomerase we have discussed while we were talking about the enzyme chapter of isomerase So the next step is because all of these are converting with each other interconvertible so there will be two molecules now there will be two molecules let's say that this is converting into glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate two molecules are there <coughs> so what are, what is the fate of that this glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate that will be converting into 1,3-bisphosphate. You can see there are two molecules. So we, we started with one molecule of the glucose. It's a six carbon compound, you know. Now we are talking about a three carbon compound. This is the three carbon compound. So there are three molecules, or sorry, two molecules. So glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate that will be converted into 1,3-bisphosphoglyceric acid and NAD that will be converted into NADH. So here a dehydrogen, glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate dehydrogenase will be the enzyme. You have to remember all the enzymes that I was discussing here. Uh, so 1,3, the next step is here, this is the phase where the ATP is generated. You can see here. Here, this is the step where the ATP used. Used. ATP used. Initially, these four five reactions, these are the reactions in which energy is utilized. But after that, this one and after that, energy is producing payoff energy steps. So, 1 3 bisphosphoglyceric acid that is converted into the 3 phosphoglyceric acid. And remember, there are two molecules generating now, the, there are two molecules generating. When these are the three carbon compound, it means there are two molecules generated. So the next step is rearrangement, just it's a rearrangement. Three phosphoglyceric acid that is converting into the two phosphoglyceric acid. Again, the two molecules are generated. And this two phosphoglyceric acid that is converting into phosphoenol pyruvate. Phosphoenol pyruvate acid. Again, two molecules are generated. And finally, you are getting the pyruvic acid, two molecules of the pyruvic acid, and there is the again generation of ATPs. So, what is the structure of this pyruvic acid? Look at this one uh, CH3, C double bond O, and C double OH. It's a three carbon compound. One, two, 
2 3 car ch3 c double bar door c double wedge in this one that that was the first four related right cop so this was four is actually removed giving to the adp thus atp is the formation this is the alcohol group again ch2h at co op c double wedge right so so initial initial four five points these are the energy consuming and later these points that are the energy producing in which nadh energy is produced in the form of the nadh as well as atps in these two steps this step and this step that is the producing in the form of atp energy in the form of atp and the final end point is the pyruvic acid <coughs> two molecules of pyruvic acid that are generated ch3 c double bond o c double oh this is the pyruvic acid it's a three carbon compound So uh, where uh, this glycolysis process uh, that is uh, uh, happening, this glycolysis process means oxidation of glucose to give the pyruvate in the presence of the oxygen, or lactate may be formed in the absence of the oxygen. So what is the site for this glycolysis process? Cytoplasm of all the tissue cells. But it is of uh, physiological importance in tissue with no mitochondria, mature RPC, red blood cells, cornea, and the lens. Tissue with few mitochondria, testes, leukocytes, medulla of the kidney, retina, skin, and gastrointestinal tract. Tissues undergo frequent oxygen lag, skeletal muscle especially during exercise. So th this is the site for the glycolysis process, cytoplasm of all the tissues, especially. So uh, briefly what we have seen in that reaction, stage one, the energy requiring stage one molecule of glucose is converted into two molecules of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. The, these steps require two molecules of ATP energy loss. Stage two, stage one is actually the energy requiring stage. Stage two is the energy producing stage, as I told you earlier. The first five reaction and uh, th that included in the stage one, the later five reaction that included in the stage two. So stage two, the two molecules of the glyceraldehyde three phosphate are converted into the pyruvates, either in the pyruvate, either in the lactate. So these steps produce ATP molecules. So what is the net production of glycolysis, ATP production of the glycolysis? That is equal to ATP produced minus ATP utilized. You can see some of the ATPs that has been utilized, some of the ATPs that has been utilized, but some of the ATPs that are generating this NADH when that it goes into the uh, electron transport chain that have the capacity to produce three ATPs so look at this one three ATPs and there was two molecules three into two six ATPs that is equal to six ATP two ATP is generated here six plus two eight two ATP more generated here six plus Two plus two, ten ATP. So, from one glucose molecule, ten ATPs are generated. And how much is utilized? One and two. So, ten minus two, eight, is the net ATP that is generated. Here, the ten ATPs are generated. Here, the two ATPs are utilized for one glucose molecule. This is the utilized. So, net. ATPs you are gaining from glucose molecule that is the 8. So 10 was 10 ATPs produced, utilized 2. So how much net gain is 8? So you are getting 8 ATPs. 
out of it. So this is the brief about the energy in the energy investment phase. ATP provides activation energy phosphorylating the glucose in the first step. Actually, this reaction that is happening, uh, this requires two ATP per glucose. <coughs> in the energy payoff phase, ATP is produced by substrate level phosphorylation and NADH, NAD is reduced to the NADH. You can see here, NAD is reduced to NADH. NAD is reduced to NADH. And this is the phospho substrate level phosphorylation. This is the phosphorylation, substrate level phosphorylation. This is again the substrate level phosphorylation. So this is the substrate level phosphorylation. And two ATP and two NADH are produced per glucose. This is the net. So look at this one. This is the summary of that glucose. The first five reactions, these are the second stage of the five reactions. So in the first five reaction, two ATPs are consumed. In the second phase where the ATPs are generated, two NADH are generated and four ATPs are generated. And this is equal to 1 NADH is equal to 3 ATPs. So actually, this is the 6 ATP. 6 plus 4, 10. These are produced and 2 are consumed. Net is 8 ATP. So this is all the reaction. Again, with the, all the enzymes, you have to learn the role of enzyme, their structures glucose, glucose 6-phosphate, their structures, how much is the ATP is converting into ADP or generating the ATPs and all the enzyme you should remember. I am All the enzyme, all the structure you should remember. So these are the uh, initial five steps of the glycolysis process and this will, this slide that will tell you later five steps steps for the glycolysis process these are the uh, reaction in which energy is consuming uh, that have to be remembered with the enzymes and these are the steps in which in energy is produced these are the five later steps these are the five initial steps in which in uh, energy is consuming energy investment phase when these are the energy producing stages five reactions energy payoff phases. So, uh, this is the last slide that we will cover today. Uh, energy produ production of the glycol, so this is the summarized form. Uh, in absence of oxygen, that is an anaerobic glycolysis process, there are four ATPs that are generated. Two ATP from 1,3-diphosphoglycerate, two ATP from phosphoenol pyruvate. And how much is the ATP utilized? Two ATP from glucose to glucose 6-phosphate. From fructose 6-phosphate to fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. So net energy is two ATP. But in case of the aerobic glycolysis process. This is the aerobic glycolysis that we have discussed earlier. <coughs> so 4 ATP is produced, that, uh, that is the substrate level phosphorylation, 2 ATP from 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate, 2 ATP from phosphorinol pyruvate. And how much is the ATP is utilized? 2 ATP in the fi first five reaction. From glucose to glucose 6-phosphate, from fructose 6-phosphate to fructose 1, 6 this uh, you can see the reaction. So the net ATP that is produced, it ATPs. So that's uh, uh, all for today. Uh, so